Hello. I turned my lights red and blue, didn't really think that that would just make them purple. Whoops. So very soon, Spider-Man No Way Home will be releasing, and frankly, I'm pretty excited. I'm a pretty big Spider-Man fan, favorite superhero, but it has gotten me thinking about the previous Spider-Man movies and basically just how good they are. And frankly, I just wanted to talk about Spider-Man a lot, so my thought was, what if I ranked every Spider-Man movie? And then I said to myself, that is a wonderful idea. You should rank every Spider-Man movie. And then I said aloud, I'm gonna rank every Spider-Man movie to my dog as I was walking him. So today I'm going to rank every single Spider-Man movie from worst to best. Please note, I may say every Spider-Man movie, but uh, I actually do not mean that. I only mean the Tobey Maguire trilogy, the Andrew Garfield duology, the currently Tom Holland uh, duology, and of course Into the Spider-Verse because I'm a massive simp for that movie. I should probably take off the web shooter. Eh, it's a fun bit. So coming in at number eight on the list is going to be very obvious. It is The Amazing Spider-Man 2. This movie is terrible, terrible, doo doo da, boo -boo -boo, not good. <sighs> I'm not gonna do another take of that. That was perfect. This movie is bad. <laughs> and I don't think that's a very shocking opinion to say. Um, let, let's just go through the problems one by one. One. Spider-Man uh, doesn't really save people the way he should. He makes jokes and prioritizes that. Like in the opening sequence with Alexi, he prioritizes knocking on his window, doing ha ha woo bits instead of, you know, actually just stopping the truck and, you know, saving lives. It has two villains, both of whom have terrible motivations that I do not understand. I still do not understand um, Electro's motivations. I have... I used to be a huge fan of this movie when I was a lot younger, um, and I st watched it a lot. I still do not understand. I really don't. Green Goblin has slightly more understandable motivations. And you know what? Here's the thing. I think if they actually went into this movie with a more, you know, focused mindset, I'll put it, they could have made a really good Spider-Man movie. The costume, that is an amazing costume. That's why they're the best or one of the best Spider-Man costumes in all of the live-action movies. And if we're going off the villains here, if you just got rid of Electro, who is there for some reason, I do not know why, but if you got rid of him and just focused way more time onto Harry and turning him into the Green Goblin, that make a lot more sense for the story and the narrative. And then also, there's actually good bits in here, and I feel people don't talk about them enough, so I really want to talk about them. This movie has a lot of really good emotional beats. Now, don't get me wrong, not every emotional beat is a good one. <laughs> but generally speaking, this movie has pretty good ones. When Peter is questioning Aunt May about what Aunt May knows about his parents, there's like actual good emotions there from Aunt May's actress and from Andrew Garfield. And then once Gwen dies, like literally the second he to try and save Gwen, the movie turns a complete 180 and turns into like a really good Spider-Man short film. Like I legitimately just enjoy watching the last like five or so minutes because once he goes and goes to try and save Gwen, it's like really good. I like the web turning into a hand. And then Andrew Garfield is actually a pretty good actor in that scene when Gwen actually does die. And then of course he goes up to the kid and he's like, hey Spider-Man, boop, 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 I'm gonna go kill the rhino now. And then, whoa, and then it cuts to black. Overall, there are good things in this movie, but it is also atrocious. There's just way too much that weighs it down. It is horrible. Watch it if you wanna have a good time. It's a really good comedy. Next up at number seven is Spider-Man 3, Tobey Maguire's last outing currently as Spider-Man. It's not good. But that doesn't mean I don't love it. It is the funniest Spider-Man movie, unintentionally. <laughs> so many great things. Peter Parker turning edgy and finger gunning people. I love it. It is perfectly comic booky silly and I, I adore it. It is funny. This movie is again weighed down by the amount of villains. You simply just get rid 
of Venom and the movie turns better. Okay, here's my plan to make Spider-Man 3 better. Get rid of Venom, right? And then Sandman, keep Sandman in as like the main villain, but Sandman doesn't really have any motivations to hurt Peter Parker. So take Harry Osborn, keep making him the Green Goblin, make Harry Osborn convince Sandman, hey, we need to go wreck Spider-Man up. And then bam, that's a good movie. And again, I'm gonna say this, there's good things in every one of these movies. Yes, this movie has terrible acting, some pretty terrible villains. Venom is horrible. I love it, but it's not good. Peter Parker, once he turns edgy, is hilariously bad. But there's good bits too. I really like the sequence where Sandman first turns into Sandman. He's crumbly and there's no words spoken, but he's trying to pick up like a locket and then learn to walk. And wow, it's really a big emotional hit and there's not a single line of dialogue. It is purely visual and score based and it is flawless. This movie has the crappy crap stuff but it also has just a little bit more of the really good stuff just to barely push it past The Amazing Spider-Man 2, in my opinion. Get ready for my probably second most controversial take this video. At number six, I have the first Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. This movie is great. I really want to stress that I actually do enjoy every Spider-Man film. This movie is silly and it's campy and it's just having fun with itself. And I like that in a movie and it's a lot of fun. I like just watching it. And Willem Dafoe as the Green Goblin, wonderful. Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man, he works really great as Peter Parker, I'll give him that. This movie is really just a fun Spider-Man movie. It's a good movie, I'll say that, it's a good movie. It's just very campy. At number five, uh, we're gonna have The Amazing Spider-Man, the first one. Yes, I think this one's better than the first Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Is this movie stupid? Yes. Is this movie good? Maybe? This movie is generally pretty entertaining and pretty all right. There are a few hiccups here and there. Uh, Peter Parker does some really stupid stuff sometimes. And overall, there are just a few interesting choices. I don't like the focus on Peter Parker's parents in this movie, but they want to focus on that, I guess. I don't like the lizard's really flat face. I wish they gave him like, you know, a lizard snout. But overall, I do think that the lizard looks pretty good. Just snout. <laughs> that would make it so much better. And I know this is opinion may be controversial, but I generally actually like the Amazing Spider-Man suit. I like the yellow eyes and like the weird roughly put together look. It looks actually pretty cool and you know what? I, I enjoy it, okay? This movie isn't the best, no, but it does have some pretty fun bits in it. I like when Peter Parker first gets his powers and he's accidentally beating people up on the subway and then he like destroys his bathroom afterwards. I really like that, that's a lot of fun. I like the bridge scene where he saves a kid. That scene's actually like a really good scene for this movie. Like I think that's honestly just a really nice Spider-Man scene. This movie has its issues. I think Andrew Garfield is a little too Andrew Garfield-y looking to be Peter Parker. They could have, you know, pulled his hair down, done anything to make him look a little nerdy, or gave him glasses instead of contacts, you know, all that sort of stuff. But I think he's generally one of the better Spider-Mans. He does the quips, he does the acrobatics, the visuals in this movie are actually generally pretty good. When he's swinging on all the cranes, that's actually a really nice scene, I really enjoy it. And number four, this is probably my most controversial take of this entire video, we have Spider-Man 2. This movie is loved and highly regarded by fans, but you know what? It's pretty good. This is constantly cited as the best Spider-Man movie. And I'm really sorry, but I think that's just nostalgia. I grew up watching the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies. I love the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies. I love Tobey Maguire and I love Spider-Man. Perfect. But I'm not gonna lie. Generally speaking, what the MCU has delivered is better Spider-Man. 
Tobey Maguire doesn't do the quips as much as he should probably as Spider-Man. He just kind of talks. And of course, there's things I like in this movie. It's number four for crying out loud. It's a really good Spider-Man movie. I love the train scene. Everyone loves the train scene. I love Doc Ock. Everyone loves Doc Ock. This is a really good Spider-Man movie, but I'm sorry to all the people that say that this is the best, but the MCU just genuinely has delivered better, in my opinion. I'm doing my best to remove nostalgia from this list, which for these movies I think is really hard. I think it's really, really hard for these movies because I think everyone loves the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies purely based on nostalgia. They're good movies, don't get me wrong, but I think they are elevated to a level above purely because of that nostalgia factor. And they are good, but I'd rate them a little lower than the MCU movies. Okie dokie. We're in the top three now. At number three, we're gonna have Spider-Man Homecoming. I love this movie. Plain and simple. I love it. No, not much really to say. I am really glad that this is an origin story by also not being an origin story. You know, it shows Peter Parker learning that you don't need all the fancy schmancy technologies of the world to beat the bad guy. You can just do it with what you have lying around at home, which is his homemade suit. And also that is the coolest homemade suit you cannot tell me otherwise. I really like this movie. I really, really like the Vulture. The Vulture is so cool and they gave him like an actually really good redesign. Anyone that says the green pajamas look is better is frankly wrong. I really just like Spider-Man Homecoming. I like Ned, I like MJ, I like it all. The one bit I will complain about though is Liz. Why is Liz there? Why, 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 why? She does nothing. She doesn't do anything. Nothing is done. I don't like that Liz is Liz because Liz does nothing. I don't know how else to put it. Liz is only there for this movie. She doesn't come back in uh, Far From Home. She's probably never gonna come back. I don't get it. But speaking of Far From Home, that's number two. <laughs> I love Far From Home. I love Far From Home. How could I not love Far From Home? Far From Home is the best live action Spider-Man movie so far. I have not seen No Way Home yet. But Far From Home is amazing. I, I, what else is there to say? It has the best, in my opinion, live action Spider-Man suit in his red and black suit. It's awesome. I love that it pays homage to Spider-Man's costume was meant to be red and black, but because blue was used for shading, people thought it was red and blue. I love that bit. I love the design. I just, it's a really good suit and I'm really glad that it's back in No Way Home. There is one thing I have to dock this movie for and it is the inclusion of the Iron Spider suit. I'm so sorry to anyone that likes this suit, but I hate the MCU Iron Spider suit with a passion. It is my least favorite on-screen live action Spider-Man suit. It is horrible. I do not like it. I really hate it, which is why I'm really glad that he goes on a trip and cannot use it. I'm a big fan of this movie. It's got Mysterio doing really cool things and I really like how Mysterio is still like like the comics using movie magic and stuff but he's using like modern movie magic he's wearing just like a normal CG suit and his Mysterio costume is a CG projection over him like that's really cool I don't don't you agree it's awesome and I really like that he's trying to manipulate everyone that's Mysterio is so good in this movie, okay? And also, he is probably one of the best comic to movie, like, transitions in terms of costume. All they added was the golden chest plate, and that's all they needed to. It looks amazing. I love it. I love it. They really did just knock it out of the park with this movie. And the end battle between Spider-Man and Edith and Mysterio... Ooh, hoo, hoo. They did not have to go that hard with a fight scene. When he's got the two bits and he's stabbing through the drones and the camera's doing twisty crap and it's going through a hallway, that is awesome. And when he's like looking down at Mysterio and then he grabs the gun of Mysterio and he, 
It's cool, okay? This movie is awesome. And it is the best live action Spider-Man movie. <laughs> However, that does leave number one. And I kind of did spoil number one by saying I was a huge simp for it. But it's Into the Spider-Verse. Sorry. <laughs> Try and make a better Spider-Man movie. You can't. They already did it. It's called Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. This movie is amazing. I love it so much. It's the best Spider-Man movie. I could ramble for hours about this movie. Every single frame was drawn to look like a comic book panel. So if you pause it at any point, literally, you'll get a perfect comic book panel because that's what the directors wanted. Any time that you look at the movie, you'll see Miles originally moves in 12 frames per second while Peter moves in 24. Showing he's rougher around the edges still and he's smoother. It's really cool, okay? I like all the different animation styles that were brought in. Like Penny Parker is animated on 12 frames a second because that's what they do in a lot of anime. Or Peter Porker is, you know, floats through the air and does cartoony things. And Spider-Man Noir, black and white. And then there is my favorite scene in any Spider-Man movie, the Leap of Faith scene. There was a video essay I watched on this scene that I'm gonna link in the description because it explains my thoughts perfectly. This movie is so good and that one scene is amazing. And if you have not seen Into the Spider-Verse, you need to see Into the Spider-Verse. It is amazing. It is awesome. Please go watch it. And I am so excited for Across the Spider-Verse. Not only to mention that it's a sequel to the best Spider-Man movie, it has the best Spider-Man in it. Spider-Man 2099. He is awesome. He's got blue and red and arm spiky things and he's from the future and he's cool and he's voiced by Dune guy Poe Dameron. <laughs> Forgot his name. Oscar Isaac. That's about it. If you want to list your favorite Spider-Man movies in order, uh, you know, there's a comment section. Have fun. Go watch Spider-Man. He's the best superhero. See ya.